What's crackalackin' YouTube? Cosmos here bringing you some more Joust-related content. Today, we will be going over how to build hunters in the Joust game mode. This is the last uh, video of the class building guide series thing. Hunters are the last one. We did guardians first, then we did warriors, then we did mages, assassins, and now finally hunters. Uh, it's a nice little ending here because hunters are actually probably the most simplistic of the classes to build in that the builds don't vary too much. You're usually drawing from the same pool of items. And in my mind, there are only kind of two really meta hunter builds running around these days that are, will be super effective for you. There are plenty of niche ones that I won't be going into, but we will be focused on two main builds. One is going to be the Transcendence build, which is already becoming popular even before the reduction in price of Transcendence that's coming in the coming patch, 8.7, I believe. Transcendence is getting reduced from 2600 to 2450. So that's going to be the core item in um, the Transcendence build, of course, and that'll be extremely prevalent even on the with the map change coming. And this video will, will uh, be relevant for that map change in addition to uh, just joust as it is right now on the new map, the new soon-to-be switched-out map. And then the other hunter build is going to be the classic Ikaval build, something you don't really see much in Conquest, but is very effective in joust, because as a hunter in joust, you really need to come online as quickly as possible, and Ikaval is the main item that's going to allow you to do that. So those are the two builds we'll be going over. Let's do a quick check-in over which hunter does which build. And then we'll get right into it. A lot of these hunters can actually do both types of builds. AMC is one who can do both. He can go the Ikaval or he can go the Trans. Or the Trans is really nice for the mana. On her can do both, but you're typically going to go the Ikaval build. Apollo also can do both, typically Ikaval though. Artemis can, but Ikaval normally. Kurnos, same thing, but it normally, normally is Ikaval. Chernabog, Ikaval build. Chiron, Transcendence build. Cupid can go either way. It's kind of kind of even either way for him. Don Zaburo can go either way. Pretty even for him. Hachiman is the Ikaval build. It's passive. You really don't need that trans. Heimdall is definitely the Ikaval build. You don't need that trans. And uh, the Ikaval will allow him to come online a little bit faster. Heimdall does come on a little bit later than a lot of these hunters. So it's really nice to get the Ikaval going on him. Hoi can go either way, but Ikaval works better for him. Izanami, you usually want to do the Ikaval. Jingwei is an Ikaval. Medusa is a trans. Neath is a trans. Rom is an Ikaval. Scotty is either or, though Transcendence is usually better for her. Uller, trans. And Shibalanke is one of the trans hunters. But the two hunters we'll be using for these two builds are Onher and Uller. Play these characters, both of them, a lot. So we'll start with Onher. He's going to be our Ikaval representative and then Uller is going to be our transcendence representative so let's start with the Ikval one which is a bit more of a popular build here I got a lot of uh, good items and there are a lot less items than normal on here than we normally have pretty simplistic when you start here you're typically wanting to go tier one Ikval with a starter and a potion or you're wanting to go tier one boots with a starter and a potion and then trying to finish boots before the red buff spawns so the four starters you're going to be choosing from here are mannequin scepter leather cowl benevolence turned into animosity and gilded arrow turned into ornate arrow which you'll only be going when you're building crit mannequin scepter is really nice to have for that jungle clear the burn's really nice to take down early bull demon kings it allow you to snowball pretty quick if you have a high pressure comp Leather Cow has no sustain on it, but it's got some really nice stats with the movement speed, the life steal, the attack speed. It's got some power on it. So nice, a lot of really nice stats. It's pretty much preference which one of these you choose. Benevolence will be turned into Animosity. We will be, we will be building zero health aside from Animosity, which you might think is a little bit weird to have Animosity, but without any health built. But even without the, any health built and just the Animosity... As your health source, Animosity will still be acting kind of like a mini chin size, adding a little like 40, 50 extra damage to your auto attacks, and that can go a long way, as well as allowing you to have Benevolence 
throughout levels one through 17 or you know one through 16 which will give you the gold spooling that the other two won't give you or any of these three actually gilded era will give you some gold and but you know it's not going to be the same amount as benevolence and you'll only be building this if you decide that you want to go crit because you're not going diamond arrow on a hunter and ornate arrow is the one you want It'll give you more gold and it gives you that crit chance that's best used when you have other crit items. So these are the four you're gonna choose. It's all preference, really. I personally probably prefer the mannequin more often than not these days, but I don't play hunters a lot. So definitely do some experimenting, figure out which one of these you like most. And then as for core items, Ninja Tabby, you're always going to get Ninja Tabby. These are items you're always going to get. Ninja Tabby and Ikaval will always be, in the Ikaval build, the items you have with your starter, right after your starter. It's always going to be these three. These, this is the core of the core. And, of course, the Ikaval is in there because it's the Ikaval build that allows you to come online super early. It gives you that quick 75 power spike along with the attack speed. And, like, once you have these three items, you will be able to solo the, the Demon King. All on your lonesome. It will die really quickly, especially if you have Mannequin. And then even without Mannequin, you have one of these other starters. It will die like decently fast just because Ikaval will give you such a big spike. And then I've got Chin Size Oboe on here, which are very significant items in the attack speed oriented build, which of course the Ikaval build will be. But you don't need to get them like in this order. Like the core doesn't extend like you build this, then you build this, then you build this, and then you have to build these two next. It's just these three as the main core, but these will be present in your build somewhere, usually a little bit down the road, meaning you're probably going to buy one more item before you get these other two, or you might even buy oboe instead of boots and get, you know, two different items, but these will be in your build somewhere just because they're the highest DPS increases you're going to be able to have access to in that later game. So, yep. That's, that's it for the core. We'll move straight on to the damage. These are going to be the items you're going to be choosing from building into this slot after the Ikaval and maybe filling up some of the other slots depending on what you decide to go. If you need a lot of sustain, Aussie's a great place to get that. It does give some flat pen in addition to some really nice stats. It's a little bit more pricey with the 2550, but that's to be expected for an item that provides so many different stats. And you'll want to be, be buying this just based on how you're feeling out the game. Like if you're just taking a lot of uh, a lot of poke and you just need that little extra bit of lifesteal, it does end up adding up too. And if you're getting into like a lot of close fights where they're just engaging you, but you're fighting them back and you're a almost able to beat them in those fights, but you, you just wish you had the little bit of extra sustain, you know, DPS isn't a problem in terms of how much damage you're dealing, meaning you wouldn't be going executioner to be dealing a little bit extra damage because they're, you know, Let's say they're rushing like three defense items. You'd probably want to go XE before Aussie. But if they're, you know, building a little bit more hybrid, Aussie could be a really nice buy for you to keep you alive in those fights. And then Executioner, of course, is a classic attack speed hunter item. Will reduce uh, the defenses of your opponents. But unlike a Titan's Bane, it gives you some attack speed in, in addition. And it will reduce... Um, their protection's a little bit more than the Titan's Bane would, but you're going to have to get some autos on them first. So this is a very consistent item to build just after the Ikaval, the Executioner, or the Aussie. And then you could even build both, or you could build the Executioner into Chins. You could build the Aussie into Executioner into Chins. It, it really is all up to you, the way you combine these items. And then we have Titan's Bane here. Like, let's say you're dealing good damage, but... You know, you maybe you've got some more abilities in the kit, like on her can benefit a lot from getting Titan's Bane proc on his ultimate, have a 40% pen on his ult, in addition to his passive pen, your ult is going to be chunking pretty hard, even against targets that have a lot of defense. So you can slip a Titan's Bane in there, or, you know, the other item that you can kind of interchange with Titan's Bane is uh, Dominance, which kind of has a similar effect and can help with some mana struggles if you're having those. Titan's Bane can be in, or a Dominance can be a nice switch for the Titan's Bane. And then the Titan's Bane you would not be building, like right here. You'd be building Titan's Bane a little bit further down the line, maybe in place of Boots or in this fifth slot. Or, oh, my bad. 
in this like sixth slot actually way down the road because you want to get some other core stuff online before you really invest into that really heavy 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 pen so like you could do something like maybe this and then like let's say you're doing a lot of damage with this already even to tanks but you just want like even more pen you just want to kill them even faster you feel like they're not able to get to you and make you want to get that aussie you can grab a titan spain here kind of deal but there is the argument that you could just go oboe here so that's where it comes down to the preference of the player and then the other damage item I've got here is the Shuriken. I only put the Shuriken here because all three of these items are really, really nice. And you can build these pretty much anywhere in the build. And usually you will want to commit to it a little bit earlier in the build. Like maybe right here. You could grab a Wind Demon. Or you could go Executioner Wind Demon. But you're definitely not placing any item before the Ickful and the Boots. Like that's why... This core is just super solid. You always want this. Like, you're not going to really ever sub anything out for those in that order. But you can choose from any of these three stars. Wind Demon, of course, is going to be your main choice. You're probably going to buy that one first. And then you're going to, if you want to get Poison Star, Shadow Steel, Shuriken. Shadow Steel will be if they have a lot of healing, of course. And then Poison Star is if you want to slow them down, reduce their damage on you. Like, maybe they're getting to you really easily. You can pick up that in the crit build. And then this, of course, is really nice if you want the Gilded Arrow and you're planning on going Ornate. But that being said, the crit, the crit usually is not what you go for. Usually you're just going for this raw attack speed. Crit is just something you can experiment with if you're feeling it. And then as for defensive options, I've got a Void Shield here. This is kind of like the only like actual defense item you're going to pretty much ever buy in a Hunter. Like, you're, you could buy, like, something like Mantle of Discord if you wanted. Replace it for your boots if you're really feeling it. But typically, the Void Shield is what you want to go because not only is it going to reduce the incoming damage, but it's going to reduce the protection by 15%. And that's the thing that you're struggling to get to with these Hunters is you're trying to get the right combination of items to melt tanks because that's typically what you're going to be hitting. And, like, even with, like, a full attack speed pen build... You'll be shredding any carry. The only carries that could be outboxing you would be uh, other carries that have crit and they just get lucky crits on you. So yeah, that's what the Void Shield is there for. Pretty much the only actual defense item on there. And it's still a hybrid item. Toxic Blade is another one. If you decided that you didn't want to go uh, the crit route and get Shadow Steel online then you can just go for like the full attack speed build and slide a toxic blade a little bit later down the road you typically don't want to get toxic blade too early because it'll nerf your damage curve a bit hard like when you're at this point of the build you're feeling really good you got a lot of damage but the next item you build here will be uh really good for you or it could be really bad for you and if you go toxic blade which just has like a bunch of raw stats and no power on it you could find out that you're not going to be hitting very hard by doing this so you typically want to get the Tox Blade a little bit further down. Like, you could get it here in this slot, but usually you're going to be getting in this kind of final slot here or trading it out for boots. Though boot, sometimes trading it out for boots could be too late just because you won't have that anti-heal until, you know, minute like 25. And then I have the Deathbringer on here. Obviously, this is not a defensive item. This is kind of just so I remember to talk about it because it's really good if you're going to crit build. Deathbringer, of course, is going to spike up your crits and make them hit incredibly hard. And you'll be building that typically after you get another crit item, at least one other crit item. So usually that's Wind Demon as your first crit item. Like if you're considering going crit at all in the Hunter build, Wind Demon should be the first one you consider, first one you get. And then you can figure out which of the other crit items you want. Usually in a crit build, you usually want two crit items and then... That is not counting if you decided to go Gilded Arrow into Ornate Arrow. So it's usually going to be one of the Shurikens and then Deathbringer. Or if you need the Anti-Heal or you feel like you really need the Poison Star, it's going to be one of the, it's going to be the Wind Demon, either Poison Star, Shadow Steel, and then also Deathbringer. But yeah, you can kind of mix and match a bit. And then we went over the Mantle of Discord. is kind of like a niche thing that if you really feel like you need the defense, you can trade boots out for it. But usually trading boots out for a damage item can be a lot nicer. Like you trade boots out for the Oboe, you trade boots out for the Aussie, you trade boots out for the Titan Spain. Like your best defense on these characters is more damage. 
<laughs> and that's why Void Shield is like the only defense, quote unquote, item that you'll be buying because it's also offensive. And then one other thing that I haven't really talked about that you can do on the Hunters is actually sell your starter item, specifically for Leather Cowl, Mannequin, and Gilded. Because a lot of the time in Joust, you're going to get to this point of the build, right? And you're going to be level 17. You're going to be level 18. And you're going to have 2,000 gold in your pocket. And you're going to be like, I really don't want to wait three more levels to upgrade this starter. And this is, this is mainly for Mannequin, Cowl, and Gilded, not Benevolence. Because, of course, you can upgrade Benevolence into Animosity at level 17. And then... Specifically for Mannequin Scepter, the upgrades aren't that attractive for a hunter. Mannequin Mace is kind of bad. Like, you don't get that great DPS out of it. And Mannequin Hidden Blade is decent. But do I really want Mannequin Hidden Blade over, say, throwing an oboe on this build? You know? So that's, that's one thing to consider, whether you want to sell your starter or not. You wouldn't be doing this, as I said, with the Benevolence because you'll be able to get that animosity around this point. So it's only with these other three, usually only other two, to be honest. You, you really do want to hold out Gilded Arrow for Ornate if you decide to go a crit build. If you're not going crit with Gilded Arrow, like you go into the game with the mindset that you're going to go crit with Ornate, but then you realize like, oh, that's not going to work. You could still just go down the normal build path and then sell Gilded Arrow and buy a different item late game and this is all judgment call all a judgment call so whatever you think will be the best for the game and you're going to get that through experience but yeah that's going to do it for uh, the ickville build we'll get into relics and consumables in in a second here once we cover the transcendence hunter we'll be using uler as the flagship character for that You'll notice that there are a lot of uh, the same items here, but it is slightly nuanced. And the reason we're not going over uh, relics and consumables right now is because it's going to be the same for um, every hunter. We'll go over that at the end. But yeah, you'll notice uh, the biggest differences are Ikeval's gone and Transcendence is here. And then there's no Gilded Arrow. It's replaced by Bluestone because the big meta build to go if you're going this transcendence build is start the game with t with bluestone and t1 transcendence you start the game with bluestone t1 transcendence a couple potions maybe two of each potion two mana pots two health pots and you're chilling you could also pull off a leather cowl with that if you want to go one of these two or you know you just like cow it's it's all it's all preference bluestone will be great sustain for you it'll be nice clear but Cowl will give you some really nice stats as well. Benevolence, you can do the same thing, upgrade it into Animosity later. Mannequin Scepter, usually is going to use that for the early, sell it off later, like I said, though. If you're playing like the Uler here, the Mannequin Hidden Blade could actually come in pretty clutch because you can just, uh, you know, in poke fights at the in like 20 minute, 25 minute games, maybe stretch into 30 minutes, God forbid, you can be getting like long range Uler 3s and getting big Mannequin Hidden Blade procs on people. So, yep, just preference. Experiment around with these, figure out which one you like. I typically like the Bluestone myself with these uh, Transcendence Hunters. But, it's up to you. And the start with these Hunters are typically going to be uh, Bluestone with a T1 Trans, or, you know, your starter with a T1 Trans. Though, if you're going Benevolence, it is quite attractive to go Benevolence with T1 Boots and, uh, like, one Health Potion or one Multi Potion. And try to get those boots before red spawns. And the reason why that works is because Benevolence is so much cheaper than the other ones. So you can actually get those boots before the red spawns. You can't really go that strat with these other three. Just because you're not going to have enough gold before the red spawns to get the full boots. That's why you just go the T1 trans. You choke it up. You have a little bit more early game presence because you have a little bit of power from the T1 trans. And that about does it for starters and starting off. Except for Bluestone, you're going to be upgrading to Brooch. Cowl, you'd upgrade into whichever one you want. This is always going to be Animosity. This is going to be Mannequin Hidden Blade, likely, or you're going to sell it off. As for core items, Ninja Tabby, you're never buying 
power boots on any of these hunters. Ninja Tabby just gives the, too many good stats, especially for Transcendence. You even get a little bit of extra mana to contribute to that Transcendence passive. But the attack speed is huge, especially since you're going Transcendence over Ikaval. You really need uh, and some attack speed somewhere. 25% is a lot for a 1,550 item. So Ninja Tabby every time. Transcendence every time. This is the Transcendence build, so your build will always start just like this. Or it could look like this if you bought the T1 Trans first, which it usually will. And then Aussie Chin Size or Koron here. Pretty much in Joust, if you're not going crit, you're going Chin Size somewhere in the build. Same, It's the same deal with these guys as it is with the uh, Ikaval Hunters, in that the Aussie Chins don't need to come like right after like this though with this build path that it this this build does look pretty good the only issue is there's not a lot of a uh, percent pen in here there's no percent pen in here actually so you could buy like a executioner here or a titan's pen here or something but aussie's a really nice thing to round off uh the core just because it gives you lifesteal you've got a lot of mana got a lot of sustain got some attack speed why not get some more attack speed and some health sustain in addition to a little bit of flat pen? can be really nice getting through that mid-game and transitioning into late where you're going to pick up some more percent pen through either Titan's Bane, Executioner, maybe both of them. Uh, you can consider a dominance, that type of thing. But yeah, moving on to the damage items. Executioner is going to be on here again, of course. These are going to be these three slots right here is typically where you're going to put these. And you can do them in any order, any combination, really. Executioner is going to be for when you just need to shred people. You feel like you're getting a lot of auto attacks off. Aussie, once again, is if you're getting dived a lot or dove really hard. And you need just a little bit of extra sustain you think would help save you in a fight. Oboe is just a really high DPS item. That will be effective when you, can, when you have a lot of other core items online. Because the Oboe really uh, shines when you have... A lot of power and pen already built so like when you're at this point slap an oboe on and you'll be dealing a lot more damage so oboe is typically the type of item you buy in that six slot sell for boots type of thing sell your starter for type of thing could be really effective for you and then titan's bane or dominance it's a bit of a toss-up which one you go it's preference but if we need to get in the nitty-gritty which we will we can take a look at the stats here, see what you're really losing with uh, Titan's Bane or Dominance. The reason why I have Titan's Bane instead of Dominance on here is because Dominance, what you're getting out of this is 50 less gold for 15 more power, 200 mana, 20 MP5, but the trade-off is you're losing out on a lot of pen. So Dominance gives you 10% flat, and then it gives you 10% on your auto attacks versus titan's bane which will give you 20 percent on everything so it will be 10 percent more on your abilities and the same on your auto attacks but it will also give you the passive on one of your abilities getting 20 percent extra pen so the first ability you're hitting someone with is getting 40 percent pen on it so if you got like a really high damaging ability kind of like Ooler. <laughs> you can uh, get a lot of value from having Titan's Bane over Dominance. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, you just got to choose. The Dominance can help your Transcendence a little bit, give you a little bit more power, but, you know, preference. It really is just preference. Just test it around, feel out which one you like more. I personally prefer the Titan's Bane. That's why I have it listed here and not the Dominance. Then I think the only thing we got to talk about are defensive items. It's going to be the same deal here that it was with the Ikaval Hunters. Void Shield is kind of the only defensive item you really should be buying, to be completely honest with you. Once again, you can throw the mantle in as a suggestion to replace for boots or something. But typically, the answer to people diving you as a hunter is to have more damage. And Void Shield is kind of the only item that has the pen and the defensiveness and we'll just, you know, grant you that extra bit you need to kill your opponent. <laughs> so, like, you could stack just so much pen in a build. Like, you could have Executioner, you could have Titan's Bane, and you could have Void Shield, man. That's a lot of pen. You, you, you wouldn't do this, but you probably want the chin size in there somewhere. 
But yeah, you'd always do that. And honestly, you could switch out these core items. I'm kind of like doubting myself right now. I, I kind of want to switch Oboe for Chins. Like Oboe is something you definitely want to have every game in the build somewhere. Aussie, not as much. Like sometimes you feel like you don't even need that lifesteal. Just because you're not getting hit a lot. And you can build like a Chalice of Healing instead. Hmm. Yeah. I'd make that switch to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Wait. I just realized I had Aussie in two spots. Alright, we're not going to talk about it. We're going to move the shuriken up here. And no one will know. <laughs> and yeah, that's the only item I haven't talked about is the shuriken. Which is, uh, I honestly only had it in defensive because I couldn't put it in damage. But it's going to be the same reason to buy as it would be on the Ikaval Hunters. Which is, you really think that crit might be worth it. They have a lot of uh, healing, let's say. You think that you might want Shadow Steel. Shuriken, you could go this build right here and then throw on the Wind Demon. And then throw on the Shadow Steel Shuriken. And this build could work out really nicely for you. You've got your pen. You've got your attack speed. You've got a lot of power that will enhance your crits. And you got the anti-heal. So this build could work out really nicely for you. And then with this build, you will most definitely want to sell Bluestone and buy something else. You could throw a Deathbringer onto that. You could throw a Titan's Bane onto that. You could throw a Dominance onto that. You could throw a little bit more attack speed onto this. You could slam an Aussie. Uh, if you go crit, typically you don't want to also go Oboe. That's a little bit of a weird stat to mix with a crit build. Just a raw attack speed item that benefits absolutely nothing from the crit you could still go chin size chin size with crit you would think would be bad but you just get you know both the best of both worlds am i right it's not too bad or you could get the void shield if you need to be more defensive it's really just all up to you like these builds are pretty straightforward the hunters but there is some freedom with what you do you don't have to do everything in order according to how i have it listed and then of course if you find some other items that work better for you than the ones i have listed here go for it but yeah, I think that does it for defensive items. And the only things we have to talk about are relics and consumables. So the relics and consumables are going to be the exact same for both the Ikaval Hunter and the Transcendence Hunter. So that's why we're doing it all together. And the only two relics, the main two relics you're going to be buying are Purification Beads and Aegis Amulet. It does not extend very far beyond that. I have Sundering Spear here as kind of like a niche relic that you're just that you could buy, but like you could mess around with this. It can be effective, but typically it's always going to be beads and ages. They've just long-standing been the best relics in the game, both for offensive and defensive capabilities, and for good reason. Carries are just able to use these relics so well. Anyone is able to use these relics so well. To maximize either your offensive or defensive capabilities, like I said. Like, I don't know, man. They're, they're just too good. They really are. And then Sunder is the only other thing to consider. Usually you'd get it instead of the Aegis if you feel like you don't need that extra defensive option and you just want to melt targets faster. Another one you could consider on uh, certainly Godlike Uller is the Blink. Though, you're getting a little bit spicy if you're diving into Sunders and Blinks as Relics. The typical, safest, the most meta relics to buy are going to be beads and ages. Then as for consumables, Chalice of Healing is something you always want to pick up. 750 health. Every time you're out in the fray, costs 300 gold. Get this as early or as late as you like. Typically, you want to get it a little bit earlier. Maybe right around the time you finish your boots. You know, you have a tier 1 trans. Pretend that's tier 1. And you backed, you were able to buy tier 1 boots, but you only have 850 gold. You buy tier 1 boots and you buy a chalice. Getting this chalice online as early as possible is huge. It's basically just lifesteal, but over time, like a, over a longer time period, and you don't have to hit anything. So that's really huge, because as a hunter, you could be taking a little bit of poke that you don't, you don't really like taking that poke. Nobody likes taking poke. So you're going to have a little bit of passive healing with that. It's basically just like having your own pocket heal for if you take a, an ability to the face 
And then, you know, you know, you'll want to be walking around with 50% health or 75% health. So might as well just boost that back up real quick. Chalice of Healing is just so nuts and joust, especially because it's always, you know, 3v3. There's going to be poke trades happening all the time. And the Chalice of Healing is a good way to keep yourself nice and sturdy between those poke trades. Then as for the other consumables we have here, we have wards. This is the shame spiel I go over every single time we have one of these class guides. Uh, the wards are particularly for when you want to defend the Demon King or put pressure on the Demon King. This, of course, is going to apply zero to the new Joust map, the new old Joust map that's coming out in patch 8.7. I believe it's 8.7. I could be wrong. It could be 8.8. .8. Like, basically, you're only going to be warding, like, the sides of the lane on the new Joust map. The entrances to the red buff or the exits to the mid lane from the red buff, I guess. And then if you're on the defensive, you'd be warding uh, near your Phoenix on the two pathways. But on the current map, these wards are going to be used to sniff out any invaders that are trying to defend the Demon King from you. You can sentry ward the Demon King, and then there are three entrances, main entrances, the mid entrance, and then the entrances from both bases that you want to keep warded when pressuring the Demon King. This one you want to, that's when you want to ward mainly. And then Potion of Power. You're going to buy this typically at the end of your build. You got all your items online. There's not much of a reason to buy it before that point unless you need to have like a last minute defense of your Titan or you're going in for a final push and you don't have enough gold to buy anything else. Like let's say it's 20 minutes deep or 15 minutes deep. You're getting ready to end, but you're at this point in your build and you have a little bit of extra gold you could use to buy a Potion of Power. Go for it. 3k pot is something you want to get <laughs> if possible of course you're not really going to get this definitely until you finish your entire build so that's whether you decide to finish your starter or sell your starter for another item you can just slam a 3k potion of power as soon as possible you could even skip over buying the elixir of speed if you want to and hold out for a 3k power pot just because this is such a massive dps increase look at that increase your power by 25 percent that's going to be extra massive if you want the transcendence build but it'll still be great on the ichabel hunter and then increase your damage into structures 25 by 25 percent and 10 percent pen that that's huge because you're not going to be capping out on pen through items within any of these builds so you'll always get value from that extra 10 percent and then the 25% to structures is, is a little bit nice. We'll be hitting the Phoenixes for maybe, you know, 300 with this type of build. Things will be dying real fast, but mainly it's for killing the players. You notice that Elixir of Power by immediately when you get it. So you could consider getting this before or after Elixir of Speed. It really just depends if you think you need another item over boots. It's all just judgment calls and how you feel the game is going. Like, if you're just getting punished all over the place and you have this build, and you're just like, oh my god, I wish I could sustain these fights. Like, you're ending fights with, like, 20% HP, just, like, barely getting out, and you're, like, passing by your speed buff that you could be lifestealing off of, but you don't have lifesteal. You probably want to get Elixir of Speed before, and trade out for a lifesteal item like Aussie before you consider going for the 3k. Well, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. That's about all I have for you guys. About how to build Hunters and Joust, the two meta builds. I might have an example game or two, but to be honest, I don't play a lot of Hunters these days. So, probably don't have any Hunter games for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Asking for a Shock build. I have a Warrior Guide on YouTube if you want to check that out. And yeah, that does remind me, this is the last video in the series of how to build all the different classes in Joust. So definitely check out the other class guides if you want to. They're on the YouTube channel in the playlist. And this is going to be the last one. How do I feel about cooldown crit bow? Oh, about uh, fail not? I think fail not is too expensive and doesn't offer enough to be worth. This guy. 2800 10% pen, only 10% crit, and it gives you a grand total of 30% crit overall with the passive. It's just not worth it to me. 
Like, I'd rather have a Deathbringer, or I'd rather have a Wind Demon. I think it's overruled by the other crit options. And the cooldown is, like, nice, but specifically on a Hunter, where you're focused around auto-attacking as much as possible, I really think that the crit is not needed. Oh, Gene, you got a link to post? One second. You got something, Gene? I'll permit you. Anything about animosity on Hunters? Yep. I said you could go Benevolence and T1 Boots. Try to get Boots before Red Spawns. And then build Animosity at level 17. This is the one starter that you wouldn't sell ever if you went it. Like if you started with Benevolence. The other starters, I talked about how you could sell the starter item late. Just because you're going to probably be reaching this point in your build around level 17. Maybe 16. Maybe 18. Just depends how the game goes. And you might not want to hold out for level 20 to get the upgrade. So you can just sell it off and buy a different item. Or if you bought the Benevolence, you definitely want to go Animosity. The Warrior Guide. Yeah, my man, Gene. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Is that all we got, boys? All right. I think that's going to about do it for the class guide of Hunters. How to build Hunters in Jest. Hope you guys did enjoy watching. Maybe checked out the other guides. If you didn't, definitely go do so. Find some new builds for yourself and your teammates. Hope it helped out. But thank you guys very much for hanging out, listening to the builds and whatnot. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy. As well as if you want to watch stuff like this happen live. There's a link to my Twitch channel in the description of this video for you guys to check out and experience the full experience. Experience, experiencedly, experience. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, thank you guys. See you later and peace.